Welcome to Victory Community Church. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, as we come together, uh, we're just going to start with a little greeting. Just take a moment and, and uh, uh, post a comment on the bottom there and, and say hello to everyone in the church. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to worship God together. Uh, so I encourage you to sit back and relax or stand and be ready to worship God. No matter where you are in your house or if you're watching on your iPad or on your computer, just, take, just close your eyes and begin to worship God together. Uh, but before we do that, I, I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about life. Uh, first of all, I want to say, we miss you. We miss, you. we miss seeing you in the church. Uh, this has been a challenging time for everybody. And, and we just want you to know that we miss you and we love you. Uh, if, if you are in need, uh, please, please let us know. Call the church office, 352-5334, uh, or you can email us, or, or if you're in need at all, just please let us know. We care about you, and we want to make sure that you are doing well. Uh, we have been staying at home like everybody else, uh, trying to find things to do apart from working, and uh, you know we've been organizing closets and uh, drawers and exercising and playing games and doing puzzles and watching movies, probably much like you. Uh, I'm working at home, uh, managing the church, trying to stay in touch with everybody. Uh, it has been a shift in everything that we've done, that we do in ministry, uh, because we can't physically be together. Uh, learning to do videos and, and being online is all new for us. So uh, uh, we, we thank you for your patience as we learn this process. I'm so grateful for our sound and media team. Dan and Steph Alexander have just been knocking it out of the park for us. And so we're so grateful for their help. I'm so thankful that they have been by my side to help me every step of the way. On a more personal note, um, my family and I were doing well. And, and uh, I also... You know, I, I also do real estate, so I've, I've been taking a break from that, too. We can't show houses or, or help clients at this time. Uh, it's all been put on hold, just like your life. Uh, my wife, Carrie, is at home, and she's uh, giving teaching instructions online uh, her, to her fourth grade students. Uh, our son, Adam, is at home with us, uh, and he's finishing his first year of dental school online. Our daughter, Kate, uh, is actually in Ohio. She went home with her college roommate because she thought she might have uh, been exposed and didn't want to bring it home to my wife. So uh, she is in Ohio with her best friend. Uh, our, son, our other son, Andrew, remains in Buffalo. Uh, he's in his third year of med school, and he is near the hospital. Uh, he's taking cl classes and waiting to see if he's going to be called into the hospital if things get crazy. You know, this time can be isolating for so many. Uh, it can be lonely for some, uh, but it's important to make effort to stay connected to people. I encourage you to call people. I encourage you to FaceTime people, email them. Uh, stay connected to people. It's very important. Uh, certainly, we're practicing social distancing, but we can still stay involved with people. You know, for some people, it, it, it can be a difficult time. It might even be difficult to put into words how you're feeling. Uh, I, I heard someone the other day talk about uh, really, it's, it's kind of like a grief. Uh, many people uh, might not understand it, but they, they are grieving or feeling a sense of loss for the things that won't be happening. I, I think of all the graduation parties that perhaps might not happen, weddings and special events. My, my niece was getting married. I was doing her wedding uh, in the beginning of May, and she's had to postpone uh, all these things uh, can give us a sense of loss and a sense of grief. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you to have the right perspective. Uh, un undoubtedly, all these things can be upsetting. And uh, with all that's going on in the world today, even in the midst of uh, all that we're seeing unfold before us, we, we still have an opportunity to be thankful, to be grateful for what God is doing in our lives. It's all about our perspective. I want to remind you, you know, you, you're at home to probably t this morning and, you know, you have a roof over your head. You have food on your table. You have a warm bed to sleep in. You have people around you that love you. A and hopefully you, you have a sufficient supply of toilet paper. <laughs> uh, but I want to remind you that all of these situations, all of these things that we're going through right now, they are temporary. 
They're temporary. They're not going to last forever. And we are not without help. We serve a great God, and he will come to your rescue. He is there for you anytime. Uh, and anytime that you need him, he is there for you. As a matter of fact, I want to encourage you to take this time to develop your relationship with God. You know, many times people complain that they don't have enough time to read their Bible or, or to spend quality time in prayer. Well, you have nothing but time right, right now. So I encourage you to take this time and press into God and spend some extra time reading the Bible. Spend some extra time in prayer. This is a season where uh, we need to press in. This is, a, this is a season where we need to be praying and seeking God. Uh, I posted some prayer tools online this week to help you have direction in prayer. Just some scriptures to help you pray and uh, give you a little focus. So uh, if you haven't read them yet, check them out. We're, they went out by email and they'll be on social media. So uh, take a moment and, and look at those to help you help jumpstart your prayer life. Um, take advantage of those things. Uh, as we get ready to worship God together, let's just take a moment to pray and, and ask God to be with us this morning. Father, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would unite us in heart, even though we are not physically here together. Father, we, we are one in the Spirit. God, we pray that you'd watch over us and protect us and keep us safe from all sickness and disease. God, we pray that you would comfort and strengthen those that need it this morning. Father, we also pray that this, this plague, this coronavirus will come to an end. God, that, that lives would be spared and that, and that this, this spread would cease. We pray for all the medical personnel that, would, that you'd be with them, that you'd protect them, that you'd strengthen them, that you'd give them wisdom and that they would be surrounded by your peace. Lord, we lean into you this morning. We give you thanks and we give you praise. And Lord, you said that you would never leave us, that you would never forsake us. And so, Father, we just open up our hearts this morning to worship you, to hear your word, and to spend time in your presence. Father, we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great
Giving is one of the ways that we can worship God, even in these times, and I know that we can turn to his word and be encouraged that as we continue to worship in that way, our families will be taken care of, and we want to praise God for that. Uh, we're going to look at Luke six thirty eight. that says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And praise God for that. As we continue to give, God's going to pour right back into our families. And even in these uncertain times, we can stand on God's promises. And we're going to stand on that promise. Um, some of the ways you guys can give in the midst of these changes is you can go online to the website. Okay, that's one of the ways. You can click the Give tab. You can prepare an envelope, make sure to put a stamp on it, and send it to the mailing address. You can mail your giving in, right? Praise God for that. And we just want to prepare our giving, and I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to get comfy with you guys as you're home. Hopefully you're comfy. You got your coffee, you're on the couch, or you're at the table with the kids. However you choose to join us right now, we're going to pray together. So right from where you're at, bow your heads. And let's pray together and stay together in these times. So thank you, Father, that our giving is blessed by you and your promise, Lord. Thank you that we have the means to give and that we're able to be faithful in that, Father. Thank you that we can rely on you to provide in all times and at any moment through any situation. Father, we just praise you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your increase as we are faithful to give. And we thank you that we can be together as a church through anything. Father, And we praise your holy name for it. Amen. Today is Communion Sunday, so I thought it would be great to have a, a communion service. You know, communion is important, and it, it reminds us of what Jesus did for us. I just want to uh, take a moment. You can go get your uh, communion supplies. You can use anything, a uh, cracker, a piece of bread, a uh, little cup of juice, wine, whatever you have in the house. Just go ahead and get that ready, and, and we're going to share communion together as a church. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, communion is a time that reminds us that of the gift that God has given us. Salvation is a gift, uh, and you can't earn it. You can't be good enough for it. Uh, really, it's, it's, it had very little to do with you except for receiving it. God decided to give Jesus. Jesus willingly offered his life for you. I want to read a moment from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Communion reminds us of what Jesus did for us. It's a time to receive. Just as you receive Jesus uh, as your Lord and Savior, you, you didn't earn it, you didn't work for it, uh, you, didn't try, you don't have to try to be good enough for it. Salvation is a gift, uh, and it's readily received, and it needs to be received. Also at the communion table, we also receive what he has provided for us. We can receive healing in our physical bodies. We can receive forgiveness of our sins. The Bible says that Jesus took our punishment on the cross. He paid the price for our sins. And the Bible also says, by his stripes, we were healed. His body was broken for yours so that you could be whole. Also, the body says without the uh, also, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. Without Jesus paying the price for us, we would be forever lost in our sin. Thank God that he has made a way for us, and we can have a fresh start. The blood of Jesus washes us white as snow. Let's just take our, our, our bread or our cracker or whatever you have, and let's just take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you this morning for this bread that we hold in our hand. Father, it symbolizes the broken body of Jesus. Jesus, you allowed your body to be broken so that ours could whole. Ours could be whole. Father, as we consume this into our physical body, we also receive the healing power of Jesus into our physical body. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. It's by your stripes we have been healed. And we thank you. We partake of this together in Jesus' name. We also give thanks for the cup. It represents the blood of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus can wash our sins away. Jesus, thank you for being our sacrifice. Thank you for pouring out your blood. Thank you for paying the price. We take a moment to examine our hearts this morning. If there's anything in us that's not pleasing to you, we just take a moment to repent and get our hearts right before you. Father, forgive us. Wash us clean. Cleanse us and purify us. We receive your forgiveness. And we take this cup this morning in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. We give thanks for the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't God good? All the time, all the time. I, you sound good. I know that you're saying that at home. All the time, all the time. Jesus Yes, Lord Your grace, the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself. at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our
Well, today is Palm Sunday, a time where we recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I'd like to start this morning by reading from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verse 7. It says, They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them, and he set them on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before them, uh, before and those who followed, cried out, saying, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth uh, of Galilee. You know, the, it was a day where they proclaim Jesus as Lord. Palm Sunday is not just once a year for the believer. Palms, uh, we, should, we should be having a, a day every day proclaiming Jesus' lordship. Uh, to better paint a picture uh, of the events that had transpired up to this particular event, we need to look back a few chapters. Uh, what was the excitement all about? What was everyone so excited about uh, at this point in the ministry of Jesus? John chapter 11 records the, ra the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and I want to read John 11, verse 45. It says, um, 
G remember, uh, Lazarus had been raised up from the, the dead, and his sisters Martha and Mary uh, lived there in Bethany with Lazarus. And uh, we find here in John eleven forty five, 45, it says, Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Many people had been converted uh, and believed because of the, ra the raising of Lazarus from the dead, which happened just a few days before Jesus entered into Jerusalem uh, as, as a king. Uh, it also seemed uh, to, to them at, at this time that Jesus would take the throne of David uh, and set up his earthly kingdom uh, and free them from the domination of the Roman Empire. That's, what the, that's why the religious leaders were plotting to kill Jesus. They, they didn't want him to be a king. Uh, John, 11, John 11, verse 47, it says, The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do for this man who, who works many signs? If we left him alone uh, like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all nor do you consider that it, be, that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. The people of that day, again, they were looking for a natural earthly king to come and set up a kingdom. And we see in Luke's account, uh, in Luke 19, that the Jewish leadership feared Jesus' popularity, so they discouraged people from praising him. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem and was hailed as king, uh, a healer, a prophet, uh, the son of God, the people received him readily uh, and esteemed him as their Lord and Savior. Today we celebrate the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. Declaring that he is Lord. Declaring that he is the son of God. Just as he entered into Jerusalem and was received, we too should give him entrance into our lives and esteem him as Lord and King, prophet, son of God and healer. How can we recognize his lordship in our life? Uh, we must remember that having Jesus as our Lord and Savior is a choice. We get to choose whether he's going to be our Lord and Savior or not. We shouldn't be serving Jesus out of duty or obligation. We serve him because we love him, and we serve him because he first loved us. We serve him uh, with our whole heart. We should be ever thankful for all the things that he has done in our lives. How can we honor him? How can we show uh, the same gratitude that they had there on that day where they, where they hailed him as king? How can we show him in our life? What does that look like in our everyday life? How do we connect? Uh, you know, I think it's a, a lot about how we connect to God. You know, for some of us, uh, a, a great way to start showing our reverence for God, showing our, our, our love for God is how we connect to him. Uh, spending time in prayer, spending time in worship, spending time in his word. Maybe you do that before you plug into everything else in your day. You know, having that time where you set aside time to esteem him, time to recognize his lordship in your life. Uh, you know, just like one of the best ways that we can show our, our own love and appreciation for God uh, is, is our commitment to him. Just like when, we, when you demonstrate your love for someone else in your life, your, your love is expressed through your commitment and through your actions and your words. We don't love people in our life because uh, we are supposed to. We love people because we, we care about them and we love them because of who they are. Uh, we show them our love by what we say and by what we do. You know, love has to be expressed. Love has to be shown. How much more should we show our love to God? I think it's so important. You know, uh, uh, next week we'll, we will celebrate Easter together, uh, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Uh, you know, this is just the beginning of, of, of that time frame that led up to, to Resurrection Sunday. 
And I think this is an important piece, that we recognize the lordship of Jesus Christ. Is he your Lord and Savior? I'm not necessarily talking about being born again. You know, there's a difference between being born again and having Jesus as your Lord. Many people have come, walked up an aisle or gone to an altar to pray uh, a prayer to make Jesus the Lord of their life. But if Jesus is the Lord of your life, he has to be your Lord every day. Every day he needs to be on the throne of your heart. If we only approach uh, God or Jesus with, with duty and obligation, uh, we will not receive what God really intended for us to receive. God wants relationship. God wants to show you how much he loves you. He wants to express himself to you. He wants to show his care, his concern, his great love that he has for you. He wants you to know how much he loves you. And if you're only serving him out of duty and obligation, you're going to miss that. You're going to miss out on that piece. You might be fulfilling some spiritual requirement, but you're missing the benefits of a loving relationship with God. You're just going through the motions spiritually. The Bible says that uh, to serve God with your whole heart, David speaks of this uh, to the Lord. In Psalm 26, verse 2, it says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. You know, we, we have to stir up our love for God. Uh, everything, uh, everything with our walk with God can't be about what we do. Uh, there has to be a love part. Uh, you can spend time in prayer. You can spend time in the word. You can, you can spend time worshiping. Uh, and you can, that can almost be a business relationship. Lord, I'm here to take care of business. I'm here to pray about this and pray about this and pray about this. And I need your help with that. And I need some wisdom here. I need you to do, do this or do that. And, and you can get, go through that whole thing and, and step out of the place of prayer and miss the love part. Sometimes we just need to come into his presence and just say, Father, I'm here to spend time with you. I'm here to love you. I'm so thankful that you're my Lord, my Savior. I just love you, Lord. And take time to experience the love that God wants to give you. What would the Lord find if he were to look into your heart today would he find a heart fully devoted to him? Would he find a heart that seeks after him? Or would he find other things in your heart? Is your heart running in other directions? You know, many times we chase after other things, spirit, uh, you know, not even spiritually. We, we ch our life chases other things. And we know that we're supposed to serve the Lord, so we, we add that in too. We're supposed to be seekers of God. David said in Psalm 51, verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I thank God that we are born of God and we have his spirit in us uh, and, and that we've been forgiven and washed clean. But, but there's some truth here that we need to make sure that we keep our heart in the right condition. That should be a daily prayer. Lord, make sure that my heart is after you. Oh, that I would have a clean heart before you. That it wouldn't be polluted with other, other things. That my heart would be pure and steadfast after you. The way we conduct our lives speaks to who God is in our life. Who is, uh, is God? Are we committed to him? You know, we can say all kinds of things. We can, we can say that we are spiritual and that we love God and we can carry around our Bible and we can show up at church and put a big smile on our face. And, uh, we, we, but if we're not committed to him in our hearts, what good is it? If you're not committed to God in your heart, I, we have to ask the question, is Jesus truly the Lord of your life. It's a hard issue. 
It's a heart issue. When we're, when we're talking about Palm Sunday, declaring the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we're talking about declaring Him as your Lord and your Savior. That's a heart thing. Is Jesus your Lord? Is He first place? Is he first and foremost in your life? Is he the number one thing that you're seeking? Is he the number one thing that you're pressing into? You know, for some, we are glad that God is there to help us. We're glad that we can pray and ask him to help us and, uh, you know, deliver us or heal us or set us free or provide for us. And, you know, but when it boils down to it, we are, you know, for many of us, we are the Lord of our life. We put our own desires. We put our own things first. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that God will bless us in the process. But only one person can be on the throne of our heart. And if you're on there, that means that God isn't. So you're going to have to make an adjustment. You want to make sure that Jesus is, on the Lord, uh, is the Lord of your heart. How can we safeguard ourselves in this area? How can we check up on a regular basis? I, I think there's some areas that we need to keep in check in our hearts. Uh, you know, the first thing I think of is faithfulness. Faithfulness. God said that he would bless the faithful. Are you faithful in prayer? Are you faithful in the word? Uh, are you faithful in coming to church? Of course, not today. Uh, in serving in the body. Again, I'm not talking about works. I'm not talking about doing things with your heart disconnected to, from it. I'm, I'm talking about having a heart connection. I, I spend time in prayer because I love God. I spend time in his word because I want to hear from him. I spend time in worship because I want to let him know how much I, I love him and appreciate him. You have to connect your heart to what you're doing spiritually. We don't want to just go through the motions. We don't want to look religious. We don't want to be hypocritical in any way. We don't want anything fake or plastic or, or, or anything that, that looks like hypocrisy. We want it to come from our heart. So in this area, we, we should be checking ourselves. Is our worship genuine? Are we pouring out our heart to the Lord. We sang that this morning. We pour out our praise. Is that coming from a, a genuine place? Is that coming from a heartfelt place? It needs to be. God is looking at our hearts. Are we fully devoted to him? Are we steadfast in him? God wants to be first place in your life. Not second, not third, not fourth, but first he wants to be first place. What is so important in your life that you can't give him first place? I think it's interesting, you know, uh, through this quarantine, everyone has had to slow down. We have slowed down. We're, we're staying at home. We're not going to work. We're not doing, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, I know there's still some that are going to work and uh, what have you, but for the most part, life has dramatically slowed down. The stores are closed. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. And, and I, think of, I think of that in my own life when I take uh, and evaluate, what is more important in my life than God? Really, we need to reprioritize what we think is important. We need to remember that serving Jesus is a privilege it's a privilege. It's not something that we say once and then uh, we are done for the rest of our, our life. We'll have nothing else to do with it. When Jesus came, there was a section of religious people who did not receive him. As, as a matter of fact, they rejected him. I think it's much like that today. We also have the opportunity to receive him. Not just him physically, but receiving his words, receiving his ministry, receiving who he is, the Son of God. And we have to do that on a daily basis. Just as, as on, on the day that he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, they made him welcome. 
They made him king. They gave him entrance. We too should give him entrance to our hearts. How do we receive him into our hearts today? Well, first of all, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's where you need to begin. And it's as simple as, Lord, come into my heart. I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior. Savior, I repent of my sin. That's what the Bible calls being born again. And if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, it's just, it's just a simple prayer away. You just ask Jesus to come into your heart, and you too will be born again. But, but for many of us, we are already born again. We've already asked Jesus into our heart. But I want, I want you to think about it a, a moment. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Is he first? Or are you? Or is a, another thing or another person taking that place? You know, uh, I believe that we, we need to take a, a moment here on Palm Sunday and recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we've been bought with a price. We're not our own. If you're, if you're a believer, you belong to him. You don't get to do what you want to do. You don't get to live how you want to live. If you're, if, you're a, if you're a believer, you're living your life for him. And I'm telling you that if you'll do that, he's got good things in store for you. He loves you and he cares about you. And he has great things in store for those who will serve him. But, you know, the, the religious people in Jesus' day, they knew who he was and they chose to reject him. You think about all the conversations that Jesus had with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And uh, these are people that went to church. They kept the law. They tithed. They did good works. Yet Jesus rebuked them again and again for their hypocrisy. Receiving Jesus into your life isn't about being good it's not about joining a church or even the promise of heaven. It's about knowing him. It's about knowing him. That's what serving Jesus is about. It's about knowing him. Allowing him to work in your life and work in your heart. Being pliable, being usable, having a willingness to change. If Jesus is your Lord, you lay that stuff down and you give him free course to your life. When he talks to you about, you know, taps you on the shoulder and says, you know, you, you need to forgive. You need to let go of that anger. You need to make some adjustments. Your response should be, yes, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I'll do that. There are times when we don't fully understand everything that God says to us. You know what? That's not an excuse not to do it. I, I was reading in the Bible this, this week, and I was reading through John 12. You know, I came across, across an interesting scripture. In verse 16, it says, His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things, were written about him and they had, that they had done these things to him. You know, it tells me that even Jesus' disciples didn't understand everything he was talking about. Yet they did their very best to do what he said. You and I can do the same thing. You don't have to have full understanding of everything that he says, but you have to have a willing heart to do what he says. Many times God doesn't map out your whole life from A to Z. He's not going to tell you every, every little step along the way. He's, you know, the Bible says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. He's just going to tell you the next step in front of you. And you have to be willing to take that step. Today we celebrate Jesus, his triumphal entry, known as Palm Sunday, a day where we declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Again, I ask you that question, and I pray that you examine your own heart. This isn't about the person standing next to you. 
It's not about, oh, I wish so-and-so could hear this sermon. It's about you this morning. Is Jesus truly the Lord of your life? You can make that adjustment if he's not. He wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your king. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem on a donkey, he was hailed as king. They shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They cleared a path. They cut off palm branches and laid, it, laid them down to, to usher him into Jerusalem. They gave him full access. I believe that's a picture of what we're supposed to do. We open our hearts wide and we give him full access. Lord, have your way in my life. Whatever you want for my life, have your way. I give you full access. I open my heart wide to you. And I say, Lord, you are my Lord. <clears throat> Let's declare him as Lord and King of our lives today. Let's just say this together. I know you're not here physically, but I'm going to say it, and I want you to say it with me. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. I declare that you are Savior and Lord. Let's just say that again. I declare that you are Savior and Lord. I hope, you, I hope that resonated uh, on the inside of you and that came up from your heart. You know, we might not, we might not be perfect uh, in all things, but we, we should constantly monitor this area of our heart. Is Jesus the Lord of our life? Is he the Lord? Is he king? I want to take a moment to pray with you before we close our service today. I just want you to close your eyes wherever you are. I know you're watching online or you're, you're looking at your iPad or your computer or wherever you are. Let's just take a moment. Let's just bow our heads and pray and, and make those declarations before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift that you have given us in Jesus. We thank you that he is our Lord and our Savior. We acknowledge him as the Lord of our life. Lord, we, we declare that you are our Lord. Father, we open our hearts to you today, and we tell you to have your way in us. We give you free access. We, we open our life to you. We recognize that we are not our own. We were bought with a price. And we, we, have a, we say that your, have your way in us every day. Jesus, we give you honor and we praise you today as Lord. We hail you as King. And, and we, we thank you. We thank you that you are our Lord. We thank you that you're a personal God, that you care about each person. And Lord, we, we, we just thank you that we can come to you anytime we want to. Oh, we thank you that you abide on the inside of us. We thank you for the Spirit of God. We thank you, Father, that you are Lord and King of our lives. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, just remember that we love you. We miss you. Have a blessed day. And again, I encourage you to reach out, to connect to someone, and you know, stay safe and stay healthy. God bless you.